This is Josie Brown with Author Provocateur. Today my guest is E. Elizabeth Watson, who writes medieval Scottish and English romances. At the Barber Bay Reader Appreciation Weekend in Milwaukee this April, she will be showcasing one of her Scottish romances, The Maiden's Defender. It's the first book in her Ladies of Scotland series. The second book, An Earl for an Archeress, is also available and reflects her personal knowledge of Northern England which she enjoyed while studying and researching prehistoric art. It's a pleasure to speak with you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It seems that you have a very interesting path to a writing career. Um, How did you happen to study in the United Kingdom? Oh, goodness. I ended up studying prehistoric rock art, uh, pictographs and petroglyphs, and uh, Newcastle University in the UK had a really good program for the time period I studied. So I applied and was accepted and ended up packing up the family. And uh, I have four sons, but I had two at the time. Brought them with. My husband studied there as well. And we just made a whole family affair of it. That must have been a real treat. I, I had always wondered what it would be like if I had just up and move my children out of the States just for, for an adventure somewhere new and see how, how it would have affected them as they got older. Yeah, it was a great experience for them. They made friends. Uh, they went to a British school. They didn't go to an American private school. So they kind of got the entire cultural experience. And they have friends, too, today that they still remain in touch with, that they met when they lived there as younger boys. So uh, it was a wonderful experience for them, and I love the UK, so it was great for me, and my husband uh, got another master's degree while he was there, so it was great for him, so yeah. And while you were there, it seems like you were studying uh, archaeology. Yes. Yep, I was studying archaeology. I was working on my master of letters, and uh, I've always had uh, just a, a deep interest in the human past. Um, I also have a, an interest in science, and uh, before I uh, switched to archaeology, I was studying fine arts, so I have a thing for art as well, so I found a really good niche in archaeology studying prehistoric art to combine all of my interests. So mm-hmm. while you were um, in that northern part of England, did it inspire you with, with the stories that you write today? Absolutely. Uh, We lived just around the corner from one of the oldest Anglo-Saxon church sites in the UK, in the northern UK. Uh, You couldn't walk without passing something historic or um, the city walls of Newcastle. Some of them are, the old city walls are still standing, portions of them. And they date, I believe, to maybe the 13th or 14th century. Uh, it, it uh, It was really inspiring. And that's when I actually started reading romance and decided to start writing it. Uh, And as you know, I write historical romance, specifically medieval and Scottish. So it was incredibly inspiring. Do you feel that um, Scottish historicals have a different voice, a different feel from, say, British regencies or American historical romances? And and if so, what do you think it is that, that kind of sets them apart? You know, they do, uh, they are a little different. Uh, The language is a little different. And, of course, we don't write in Middle English or Old English. But uh, the the voice that you use when conveying it um, is is definitely older, more archaic sounding, to sound authentic, at least the way that I write. Um, Social norms of the time were, were in some ways, fairly different. the structure of society was a little different. You had um, vestiges of feudal systems still in place. And so uh, the relationships between men and women would have been a little bit different. The way in which a man or a woman might have courted each other would have been different. Uh, a lot of arrangement, a lot of uh, political alliances um, were important when it came to noble marriages. Uh, so I, I do think that they they are different. And yet, um, you know, the, the historical aspect of propriety and certain behaviors among ladies and gentlemen um, are still also very similar. Even 
throughout the medieval times and moving forward, the customs changed as well. Yeah. Especially, Mm -hmm. like, as you point out, the courting customs or, you know, I would imagine, you know, also the sensual and sexual norms as well. Yeah, yeah, to a degree. You started having more and more emphasis on love over just um, alliances or uh, arrangements that would have had a a mutual benefit to different families uh, as you progressed through the Regency and Victorian and so on. Um, That's not to say that people didn't have love marriages in the medieval. You do read little bits and snippets and research here and there of couples eloping because they wanted to be married. Um, I, I think the, that love has always been, to a degree, in, in a factor in some, in, in some cases uh, throughout history. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, with the structure, the, cult, the structure of society being different, um, that would have um, <clears throat> it, it, the way in which couples would have been introduced, the expectations of how a man and a woman would behave around each other, who should be with them, um, when they should be allowed to uh, be more casual with each other would have would have been a little different. Right. The book that you'll be bringing and showcasing at Barbara Bay is The Maiden's Defender. Yes. The first book was An Earl for the Archeress, and that came out last July, um, right around the time that Romance Writers of America has its big conference. Uh, the Maiden's Defender came out in November. Uh, both the books are about um, a, a pair of sisters. So each each book is about one of the two sisters. Uh, and they are uh, part of the series, but they are also standalones as well. That's great. So tell me a little bit about uh, The Maiden's Defender. Uh, I love this story. Uh, I love the hero in this story and really enjoyed it. Uh, getting to know him and getting in his head as I wrote him. Uh, the hero, Charla McGregor, is um, formerly the guardsman to the heroine's father. Uh, the heroine's father was an abusive man. He was uh, unkind in many ways. He was also uh, treacherous and plotting against the king. And so when the story begins, he's been in prison, and Lady Madeline has been um taken on as a ward of the crown. Uh, Carla's reunited with her, and he's always had a fondness for her, but he was always afraid to show it because he knew what kind of a man her father was, and he served her father. He's also not a nobleman in the sense that one would think of the peerage. So uh, she is. She's the daughter of an earl and a formerly very powerful man. So while he, uh, he is a guardsman, he's a head guardsman, and he's strong and he's loyal. Uh, He also has a vulnerability there where he doesn't feel as if he is quite good enough in terms of social standing and wars with his desire for her. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship of the sisters? Yes. So in the first book that came out in July, An Earl for the Archeress, Lady Madeline's older sister finds her love story. She has... uh, escaped their abusive father. And where Lady Madeline is very demure and quiet, her older sister, Mariel, was uh, the opposite. She was willing to take charge and to break away from their father and to uh, get out on her own. She was an archer, um, a master archer, and she was using her skill to escape her uh, her predicament with, with her father by winning tournaments and keeping the earnings. Um, Lady Bowen, as I said, is the opposite. She learned from an early age that in order to withstand their father, that uh, turning inward, keeping to the shadows, uh, keeping out of his way was the best defense against him. And so as her love with Turla McGregor progresses, he really helps her find her voice. Uh, She learns how to stand up for herself, how to take charge of the moment and say what she wants. And, uh, and go out and find it and uh, grab hold of it, seize it for herself. Um, her older sister, Mariel, in her story uh, had to kind of learn the opposite. She had to learn how to let a man help her and um, 
how to uh, not always have to be the hardened, tough one, but uh, how to soften a little bit as well. I love it. I love that you've made them such different women, such different people. Mm -hmm. And I also love the fact that the men in their lives are nurturing that side of them that has had a harder side, harder time coming out. Mm -hmm. I was very excited for the series to come out. And uh, it's been just really, it's been a lot of fun to put them out there uh, to share them with readers. And the whole experience was was neat to see both those books through to publication. Now, you have um, four sons. Yes. And uh, what are their age ranges? Oh, I have, uh, my oldest is almost 20. My second is almost 18. He'll be graduating this year. And then we had a surprise several years later. And we have a six-year-old. And a four-year-old. He just turned four yesterday. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I wanted to ask you, have the two older boys read your books? They have not. Um, my oldest son has said he wants to. Um, because I was writing romance that has uh, open-door, not just open-door scenes, but open-door thoughts about each other. <laughs> I, I did always say, oh, just wait till you're 18, and then you can read whatever you want. <laughs> right, right. Um, they're free to read them now that they're in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, is this your first time to Barbara Bay? This is. I, it's my first time going, uh, whether as a reader or an author. I've never been before as a, as a fan or as a reader, so I'm really excited. Um, it looks like it's going to be an incredible event, and there are a lot of authors there, some that I know, so uh, that should be really exciting, and I'm excited to meet the readers, too, and to to have all the fun, all all of the activities. I know that there are things planned in the evenings, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's new to me. Uh, I do have family from Wisconsin, so I'm excited to go back up to Wisconsin. It's been a long time, but yeah, yeah, first time. Perfect, and uh, the Wisconsin readers will be happy to hear that you've got family because that means you'll be part of their family too. Aww. <laughs> Want to hear more about the authors who will be attending the Barbara Bay Reader Appreciation Weekend? Just go to my website, authorprovocateur.com and click on to the other interviews. You'll also find them on the event's Facebook page. And beneath each interview, feel free to leave a comment about your favorite part of it. Doing so puts you in the running for a bundle of the author's books. Listeners can leave one comment per author to be entered for the drawing. This is Josie Brown of Author Provocateur, signing off.